New Jersey Transit almost screwed me again. I got to uh, the train station, see Caucus train station. I got there just before nine. And we got on a train, and now it usually takes 10 minutes to get on a train from uh, Sea Caucus to uh, the Penn Station. But this train was going five miles per hour. In fact, they had the guys who were actually like doing the pump. <laughs> just had to do the train. And then you have an engine. Just had the guys like this with the hand crank. I made it to the Park Lane Hotel just in time, uh, and I'm here to walk with. Uh, New York Yankees legend Don Mangley, former captain, has his number retired, should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And I think the momentum is moving for him. He's gonna get in within the next few years. There's definite momentum, especially with players like Harold Baines getting in. But uh, it's gonna be a great walk. Uh, Don Mangley is here with the Toronto Blue Jays. He's currently their bench manager. So this is gonna be another great walk. So stay tuned, Frank walks. How much weight have you lost? Uh, 50 pounds since I started the walks in uh, September. How many walks have you guys done? Uh, this will be uh, 190. 190? 190 straight days. Oh, wow. Oh, how many, how many different people have you walked with? Uh, well, uh, we did a couple of Soprano actors. Uh, that hasn't premiered yet. Alan Houston's gonna premiere Wednesday. J.J. Uh, Watt, uh, Mike Francesa, uh, Scott Van Pelt, uh, Dave Portnoy, uh, uh, and Saquon Barkley. Okay, I heard the J.J. Watt one. The guys at the the field, they they said the J.J. Watt one was awesome. I don't know if they've seen all of them or not. That was actually the first one, J.J. Watt. Oh yeah. Yeah, J.J. Watt was the first one. Yeah, very cool. Uh, and then uh, they just get, they're getting better. They're getting better and better. I'm getting more comfortable at it, and it's 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 it's, it's great. I think we're gonna we're making some real good momentum with it. All right. Especially uh, the Scott Van Pelt one, uh, Mike Van. You know Mike Francesa. I'm sure you're familiar yes. with him. Yes. I read. Mean, I think that was a few, the, the least amount I've ever talked. Oh yeah. So he's, just, <laughs> he's running the show. Yeah. yeah. It really felt like the Mike Francesa show, but that's what makes it great. That's what makes that's what makes Mike Francesa such a legend. Yeah, Scott Van uh, Pelt too. I like. I love Scott. Yeah, that, that was that was probably the best, most picturesque one so far. We uh, did that uh, in the shadow of the Lincoln uh, Memorial by the reflecting pool. Oh, okay. okay. So that was a great one. So it's all been here in New York? Uh, no, we did, one, we did one in Lake City. Okay. We did uh, Mike Francesa up by his uh, little place. We did Saquon Barkley in New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, of course, Scott Van Pelt down in Washington, DC. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. So we're going anywhere, everywhere. I like it. That's the uh, best thing about it. I mean, uh, today, uh, when we're walking, we're walking. It's just about the uh, Yankees home opener is going to be tomorrow. Yep. And you're here with the Blue Jays. Yep. I mean, uh, of course, anytime you go to Yankee Stadium, you always get the uh, the attention. It's uh, number 23 is uh, immortalized. Uh, There's a lot of immortalizations over there, right? Yeah. I think they might have gone a little too far with some of them, personally. No, it was a lot of great, you know, the, when, they, when you had that run like you had, yeah. you know, with Jeet and the boys, O'Neal and all those guys, that's what happens, right? I mean, if it keeps up, the Yankees are going to have to go to triple digits. There you go. That'd be I good. Got, I got a feeling that Juan Soto is just made to be a Yankee, and it kills me that he's made to be a Yankee. Why? Because I'm a Mets fan. Oh, I got you. <laughs> no, Juan's great. He's been great since he's, he's been young. Uh, you know, right away, right out of the gate, this dude's been awesome. He, he is the left-handed, just superpower, does everything hitter the Yankees have been waiting for for a decade. You know, they've had a judge who's, who's a legend himself, but that left-handed power stroke into that into the, those seats, it's just going to be... It was made for him, Not and, he's, and he's such a good overall player. I, I, I actually think, that if, you, if I'm my, and I did it in my one of my fantasy drafts, if you had the first overall pick, Juan Soto would be my number one pick. First overall, you're going with Juan, huh? Yeah. Otani's out. Yeah, especially since he's not pitching this year and he's stuck in that DH position. How about Mookie? Oh, he's very good too. I, I the, the Dodgers are loaded. 
Yeah, Mookie does it all. The Dodgers are loaded. Yeah, Mookie's very good too. Mookie has so many great players now. <laughs> you know, Seager, right? Another yeah. one that, that changes the, the landscape. Well, the, the Rangers getting him changed everything. I remember, made, uh, I remember telling Andrew Friedman when I was out in L.A., I said, I seen Seager Young, and I said, man, I would not trade this dude for anybody. And he, and he basically said there's only, like, one guy, and that was Mookie. So it was like he had that, he, had that, he loved Mookie. But both great players. I think so, hey, I, can I ask you a question? Yes. Right, so now my boys at the ballpark, you know they watch you. <laughs> or they hear you. And, uh. But my boy Vogelbach, you get on Vogie, I hear. Uh, I don't want you to see you yelling and everything at me, but my boy Vogie is a good dude. What's up? Well, you don't like, how come you don't like Vogie? How can you not like Vogie? Because he stood in the plate too often and just like, so there was one game in particular that, that like bothered me, where he stood there and three straight pitches right down the middle of the plates and he just like watched him. Yeah, this dude's got a game plan. He's pretty good at it too. But I do. I, he is sometimes looks passive. But yeah, he, and that, he, he walks up there with like a game plan, and, and that that's what bothered me. And I'm just so frustrated about the Mets all the time. It's just I am a, I am an angry, <laughs> just like broken Mets fan. Broken? Yes, broken. They have broken me. The Mets have bro have ripped the heart out of my. It's kind of like. Uh, Indiana Jones, when they rip the uh, heart out of your chest and they laugh. Right. I, I, I pitch them to do that to me every year. I mean, that's... I love it. Uh, it's, it's, it's being a Mets fan is just... It's, uh, you see, what happened is, I was nine years old in 1985. And that was the first year I really fully got into baseball. And I could have been like my whole family and been a Yankee fan. But no. I had to watch Dwight Gooden and be amazed by Dwight Gooden. So I went to the Mets. Oh, shoot. I almost slipped. Yeah, I almost slipped there. But I went there, Dwight Gooden basically became a Mets fan. And it was great being a Mets fan. 85, for my money, was one of the best baseball summers for either the Mets and the Yankees. I mean, both teams in the pennant race the last week in the season. Both won in the 90s. Both will be wild cards if they had the current format. Right. Uh, and, and Dwight Gooden just like being dominant. Yeah, the Doc that was, year. He was something special. They had Doc and Straws. That was Lenny there, Dykstra there. Uh, the end, that was Keith actually his and, rookie season. Okay. Dykstra didn't. Uh, Dykstra had, He's had an okay rookie year, season. Year or two later. Kind of uh, got going. Yeah, he, 86 was when he started like to really establish himself. And of course, then the second year I'm a Mets fan, 86, 108 wins, the wildest, craziest team ever to lace up uh, the, the, the cleats. And uh, it was fun to be a Mets fan. 87, they had a little bit of a letdown because of injuries. And 88, they won 100 games and they fall apart in the playoffs. And, Ever since then, it's been one disaster after another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to say I follow it like that. I probably don't follow it near as closely as you did. And <laughs> only like the New Yorkers do, right? Yeah. They, they follow their sports and, and the passion they have about it. It's kind of a cool thing for me. That's what I kind of enjoyed, I think, as much as anything. Just the craziness of the fan and kind of getting into it. I mean, yeah, the Mets were the Mets, and, and people don't uh, really uh, think about that today. It's, it's the Yankees are now kings, and the Mets have, have subjugated the throne long ago. And, uh, but in the late 80s, the Mets, the Mets were the, the story in New York. They had the back pages. And uh, the only, like, you were basically the Yankees, the whole Yankees, like, existence back then. No, the late 80s were pretty good. We still had some good teams. Oh, very, yeah. The very end, right? It, we yeah. had some teams that got uh, kind of discombobulated when we trade 
you know, Willie Randolph and Ricky and Winnie, and we just kind of got rid of all those guys. Well, Ricky Henderson, when he came to the Yankees, I mean, that, would, I, that 85 season with Ricky Henderson, that was something else. I think Ricky's the best player that I ever played with. Yeah, and I say that in due respect to like Winnie and those guys, but Ricky just changed the game. Like when he was rolling from getting on base to hitting for power, hitting for average, defense, disrupting the game, just changed the game. Ricky Henderson, when he got on base, if he walked, you basically walked a double or triple. Nobody could steal dirt base the way he stole dirt base. No, nah, he was something. I, I mean, uh, he broke the record against the Yankees, uh, the uh, the all-time record. And people don't realize this. Ricky Henderson also has the career record for most leadoff home runs. And it's by a wide margin, too. Yeah. I got a guy, George Springer, who's making a, a small run at that. He's probably a few back, but George is another one of those guys that Hits that leadoff spot and hits for power. George Springer, that's another guy I think the Mets should have been a little more aggressive in on a couple years ago. Disappointed the Mets didn't get him. But yeah, he's, he's good. I like George Springer. No, nah, George plays hard. He does it right. Now, how are the Blue Jays this year overall, would you say? Well, how, how well right looking? now we're three and four, and we haven't really been very consistent. We've kind of either been scoring runs or not scoring runs or pitching really good or not Or getting pitching. no hit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> like we score nine, we score eight, we score zero, we score one. But hopefully that's just the beginning of this this ser season. And uh, I think they have too good a lineup to No, I feel like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna level out. George is gonna go, Bo Bobby Shet's gonna hit, Vlad's gonna hit. Justin Turner's amazing. Um, well, one know, guy what he like, brings to the table. He was another guy, like guy you guys let go. Excuse me. He was Justin Turner. You guys just gave him away. Oh, uh, yeah, that was that was a decade ago. Yeah, it was a long time. I looked at Justin Turner. I was I never thought he was anything. And then it's it's like the Mets don't have an eye for talent or player development. That players that go to the Mets or come up through the Mets system come up like unprepared sometimes. And I, you know what, Frank, here's what I think on that. I think sometimes it just takes guys a while. You know, there's, there's guys that take off right away, like Straw comes and he's just good right away. And other guys, it, you, gotta, you kinda gotta fail a little bit here. And that's anywhere. It's like, it's no different in uh, different places, right? Guys come up, they kinda struggle, they go back, all of a sudden they figure it out and then it's over. Well, right? New York's hard to play too. Is that uh, the, the pressure and the spotlights. And I guess guys like me sometimes don't make it that easy. <laughs> You're the one causing all those issues. <laughs> well, Trevor here. May says that. Trevor May blames it Trevor, on you? Trevor May says I'm um, toxic. Toxic? Yes. Yeah, wow. he, uh, he actually mentioned me in his uh, retirement Twitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Trevor. Yeah. Want to go for a walk? <laughs> You should take you for a walk so you can talk through all this. You guys can work it out. Um, <laughs> if but, you have any interest in working it out. <laughs> hey, I worked it out with Scott Van Pelt. There you, oh, uh, Scott and you and Scott were on bad terms? He always seems so happy when my team's loose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, th you thought he took joy in the Mets yes. losing. Uh. <laughs> it, 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 let me just put it this way. I am a broken Mets fan. It's, it's, it's not even like, 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 I, I, like, I don't believe that. Because if they go off and start winning here, you're going to be jumping right back on that bandwagon. I just don't see it coming anytime soon. Oh, they're going to, they got a chance. Everybody's got a chance. It's early. I mean, uh, I, I don't want to see Pete Alonso in another uniform. That, that, that worries me. That worries you? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I just think that he's a guy who did 500 home runs and we're all wearing a Mets uniform. And yeah, he's been pretty amazing be too. He has been special over there. Like it's like I seen I kind of seen him at the beginning when I was managing in Miami 
And it's like you couldn't really tell, is he going to be a swing and miss guy? But he has, he has figured it out and is actually very dangerous. Like he's one of those guys you fear when he walks up there. You feel like he's going to be dangerous. The one player who has been a bright spot so far for the Mets this year is Francisco Alvarez. Oh, the cat, young catcher. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, he's got a nice swing too. And I think he's got a lot of. Uh, Careful here, Frank. I think sure. he's got a lot of leadership and uh, a lot of leadership and maturity issues, and he's already 22. Okay. I don't, I don't <laughs> like, know him like that. I don't watch him like that, but just kind of seen him as a player last year. But yeah, well, I like the fact that he's, he spent this, this he, the offseason making the effort to learn English. Yeah. And that to me shows me, hey, look, I'm a catcher. I have to be a leader here. I'm going to have to talk to the press. I want them to hear it in my voice. I want them, I want to make inroads here. And that really shows that this guy wants to be a team leader and has like a serious bend and it's going to be really good. Okay. We'll see then, huh? I like Alvarez. All right. He's, uh, but, uh, now, when you were at the Met, you were the Yankees. Right. Now, of course, you had the up and down. You had the, uh, that big stretch of your career, 84, 85, 86, 87. You're arguably the best player in baseball at that time. You were winning uh, MVPs. Could have won back-to-back -back MVPs. Right. There was, uh, you finished second, I believe, in 86, right? Right. And uh, the 85 season, you had... Uh, what was it, 146 RBIs? Yeah, somewhere in that in that range. I think it was 145, but who's counting it? <laughs> and 87, you had the uh, you tied the, the Dale Long record. Right. Eight consecutive games of a home run, six grand slams. Now, why couldn't those teams take the next level back then? Well, I was pretty young back then. So, like, at the beginning of your career, you don't really – look at the teams like how are we being built or what are we doing so you you kind of just playing and uh careful of step right here so you're kind of just playing but i think in general we seem to be more offensive than and didn't really go in on the pitching as much <laughs> right? like i feel like gator was a guy that we uh well he had know, a good year in 85. yeah that's really what i'm saying he was kind of the mainstay of it and he was towards the tail end of his career, still still doing well. Okay, watch out here, we're gonna get kicked by some horse. Um, but I think in general, in general, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we, we always invested in hitting, you know, the Bronx Bombers. Yeah. And and we had, obviously had some great players. Jack Clark. Yeah, Jack, but I mean, all the guys, Don Baylor, and obviously Winnie, uh, a Hall of Famer, and Ricky. But you forget about the Claudel Washingtons of the world that are that are really, really like good hitters. And and so there was a lot of offense and probably not as balanced with the pitching side. Yeah, you I mean, yeah, I remember that. It was uh, you struggled often to find a, a great pitcher. I remember uh like uh Ed Whitson was like a Yeah, they, yeah, you tried, right? They tried the guys and some some work out, some don't. And we did have Rigetti then. He went from, you know, being a starter to a really good closer. Uh, well, people forget that he held a record for a few years for yep. most uh, saves in the season, 46 saves. Yep, yep. So he was he was special. And it, I think in general, probably the balance, just the balance of offense and, and pitching. Yeah, you got Rick Roden. I remember you made that, that trade. Yeah. And it's just like the Yankees, just like no matter who, what pitcher they brought in, it just didn't. Didn't seem to work. That was the one thing I always just remember about the Yankees. And then George was just always frustrated, was constantly frustrated. We also think about it, it was it was a little different landscape back then too. You had to win a division. Oh yeah. And so you're well, in the division. Well, I mentioned it before with, that the, uh, you would have been in a wild card if you had, there was a wild card in 85. But I mean, think about it nowadays, like if you did it every year then, because I mean, you're in a division with Boston, uh, who, who's gonna, had some, you know, obviously really good teams. Um, Milwaukee. Toronto 85. Yeah, Tor Toronto the 85. <laughs> Baltimore with Ripken and Eddie Murray and those guys. So, like, and you had to win your division. And it wasn't like a, you know, you, you had the 84 three Tigers. Three teams getting in. Like last year, the, the 
in at least, right? Three teams got in, right? So the year we went 85, yeah, the 84 Tigers is a great example, <laughs> right? 35 and five to start the year, and now you're I like, I mean, okay. your division's over. When it's when they're 35 and five, yeah. the division was over. It was just, yeah. uh, that, that, 84, that 84 Tiger team was just like, just got off to such a great start. Then they, they basically the rest of the season, they coasted, and then in the playoffs, they just crushed everyone. They went, they swept the Royals and uh, needed only five games to take out the Padres. Yeah, I don't know if they coasted, they just kind of, they just kind of like were dominant all year long. It was one of those years, right? Yeah, it was just like, it was like, they were so far out in front, it was never any, like. Yeah, no drama with, no the, drama. with the, the pennant race. And that's, that's where I like the, you like the wild card? I, I, I kind of like the I wild like card. I like the wild card. I'm not sure if I like adding a fifth and sixth yet. Right, you're talking about the way it is right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know though, man. There's some good teams. I feel like we were a good team last year, and there are good teams. Well, that, when you play in a tough division like in the East, I look at what's happening in the playoffs the last few years, where these one-two seats who have to buy are like flat, and they're getting picked off by the wild card teams. I think you're going to see eight with not too not not too long for now. Yeah, I think it's it'd be fine. It's inevitable. Yeah, I think that'd be fine too. It's inevitable. Yeah, I think the more teams get in, fan bases. Well, are... I think what's going to happen when you have expansion, I think baseball is going to either it's going to probably go to uh, uh, go to thirty. Uh, well, it's going to go to thirty-two teams. Thirty-two. Yeah, so you can have uh, eight, fourteen divisions. I think that's the uh, eventually going to happen in baseball. Okay. Talk to the commissioner on that yet? <laughs> I just a sense I get. I think that's what he actually wants. Because uh, once once the A's are in Vegas, and that's a whole different uh, subject. But once the A's are in Vegas, they're going to add two new teams. All right. And like Nashville that. is a lock to get a team. I and hope so. I think Nashville would be a great place for a team. You're a double A team, right? Yeah. The Nashville Sounds. Yep. Yeah. With uh, Buck, Buck Showalter. Walter. Exactly. Buck Showalter is your teammate. Buck Showalter. Yep. Chasing Steve. Bye bye, Balboni. Steve Balboni. Uh, yeah, there's. The minor league chain, right? <laughs> Bonesy was always a year ahead of me. Just kind of like he was hitting 40 bombs and I was hitting four. <laughs> Steve Balboni was just. And then he won, he won, he, uh, won the. Uh, Home, home run title 85, I think. And 85. It's yeah. Kind of you know, it's kind of a, like, you don't talk about, there's so many great players, but Bonesy could really hit. He was smart. Uh, swung a big old bat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I my him. gosh. thing was heavy. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. But today's game's a lot lighter bats. Like, most guys are, are probably under 32 ounces, 32 or below. So yeah, they didn't handle, right? They like to the, didn't handle the... Uh, Big barrel. Uh, was, him was like a P89, I think. Steve Balboni. Because I've always heard that like Bam the, Bam Club. the favorite, the, the uh, favorite bats, at least when I was growing up, they were all talking about the Al K-Line model. Okay, well, what was the K-Line, K55 or something Yeah, like I, think that, I think that was like, like everyone like the Al, the Al K-Line bats. That was like the uh, popular model they always talked about. Because he had the thin handle, big barrel, and everyone loved that. You know what bats I like? And the new ones, the uh, kind of looks like they have like an axe handle. Oh yeah, the axe bats? Yeah. I like those too. They look like they, they look like they could do damage. Yeah, I like the axe bat. Kind of puts a bat, throws it out in your fingertips a little bit. For sure, I like that. Now you have your big gears, and of course 90, you had the back issues started to creep in. Right. And uh Personally, I think you should be in the Hall of Fame. Well, I appreciate that. I, I mean, I think that a lot of people have been overlooked. And uh, wait, considering that you're, for a, at least a four or five year period, the best player in baseball, I think that should be going to account. And uh, so I think uh, Keith Fernandez should be in for being the greatest defensive first baseman ever. If you look at the stats, all the most gold glove winners in every position, except for space, are all in the Hall of Fame. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Keith was fun to watch. He was another another water puddle here, Frank. Well, it's been uh, 
uh, this is our first break of rain, like the last three days. I, I know. Mean, nice. I was, I, I, was excited. I was starting to build an ark. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were walking right into, I thought I was going to be walking in the water today. I was going to be complaining, running shoes. Uh, but at least it's, it's not, it's, it's somewhat nice. No, I mean, we haven't nice. quite, we quite haven't had spring, spring release hasn't sprung yet, but uh, we're looking forward to that here. Oh yeah. But uh, late in your career, you finally got a chance to go to the playoffs. The Force 94, the strike uh, ruined what well, I think it was a good Yankee team. Yeah. I think 90. That I was think a 90, fun team. That was one of my most fun teams to play on, Frank. I think the 94 Yankees, of course, I think they were the best team in the American League. Yeah, that was, that was a that was a fun year, and I think for a, a lot of reasons, like a lot of good guys that played hard. Buck did a great job of putting that. Buck and G. Michael put, did a great job of like slowly putting pieces together with that team. <laughs> well, G. Michael, he's the one that. He, I, I don't know if he gets the credit he deserves. He he's for sure the, does he, not. He is the one who made the Yankee dynasty. Him, I, I really believe that. You and, know, that's and, when they held. You know, with, you know. Well, and even look at the, I mean, just you kind of have to give the farm system and player development credit because, I mean, all of a sudden you walk out of there, you got Bernie who comes out of the system, and Jeter uh, out of the system, Posada out of the system, but, Nick Johnson out of the I mean, as this thing kept going, right? The famous story is that Bernie Williams was struggling early in his career and George wanted him traded. And G. Michael basically knew he wasn't going to trade him. Like, like, go, I'll see what I can get for him. And then he came back and he says, look, nobody wants him. We might as well just t give him a try. Oh, uh, I don't know about <laughs> that one. That, yeah. that could be folklore, but because Bernie was a hell of a player, man. But, but Lee, all those guys, they got Pettit came up, you know, that they, they really did a nice job and, and they, and that's, uh, they held on to those guys. A lot of times. Yeah, well, G. Michael is the one who basically did that. G. Michael would basically hear George say, I want this guy, I want this guy, I want this guy. Go, yeah, and he says, he says, because he knew what he had, and that's basically what helped the Yankees. Yeah. Like, G. Michael actually had the courage to say no to George. And yeah, I don't know in how. The end, you never know how that works up there, right? You <laughs> and really in don't. The end, that ended up being the best thing ever for George. You know, these, these great owners, these. They, they spend a lot of money. You need, a, you need to, uh, someone to go no to you every now and then and have that courage. And it makes you look better. It makes the guy look better. I think George Simon should be in the Hall of Fame. He's an owner, too. Yes, yeah, he George, changed the game. Tremendous, right? And he, for all the for hell, all the, yeah, the bad for stuff, all right? the a lot hell of good. he gets. And he did a lot of bad things. But Dave Winfield, that was awful, the way he treated Dave Winfield. There, there, there's no doubt about that. That's well documented. And I know that he, he somewhat made up with Dave Winfield, but that was just bad. But he did a lot for charity and a lot of good work and a lot of, helped out a lot of people, especially down on Doc. He like, uh, when these guys are going through all their problems, he basically like, they come to the Yankees and he like really like, try to do their best to like help them out. And that was like, Careful big. right here, we got a little mud coming. I don't want you to slip in here. And of course, Dowell and Doc are just like two players that are just like my all time favorites. I, I'm kind of like a little melancholy. They never had the, the success they had and their troubles that they've had. But whenever they're like, that Dowell's like doing really well now. And yeah. Dwight, so he seems like he's doing well. He's gonna retire his number. Oh, cool. That's, they're retiring both numbers, actually. Very cool. They're retiring uh, Dwight in April and retiring uh, Daryl in uh, June. Yeah, I love both those guys. And we kind of all came together. Yeah. Daryl and Doc and myself kind of all came <laughs> at are, did. the same time. And I, <laughs> that 86 Met team is just, I, I hear the stories of that team. It's like, I can't believe how crazy it was, but it's just so, it's just like. Different time, right? Yeah. You, Different you, time. You couldn't do what they did today. But you, you know, you mentioned uh, Mr. Steinbrenner too. I think that's really cool uh, that people realize all the good things he he would do for do for other people, not only just like players, but I think just just his his communities and things like that in general that he didn't get attention for or didn't want attention for, just now, would, just would do it out of the goodness of his heart. And I always think that's cool when when you don't really necessarily want the attention for it. 
you just do it. Now, when now speaking about communities, now what do you do? Uh, I know you do a lot of stuff for Indiana. Yeah, at home in, in Evansville, we start our our uh, our foundation is basically trying to help the most underserved kids in the toughest neighborhoods, <laughs> and and it started off, to be honest with you, with a lot of sports, right? You know, baseball, uh, athletic things, which. I feel like I learned a lot of lessons from, and it was, it was really good, but I think it, over time, it's really went to education. Oh yeah, that's good. You know, reading programs, STEM labs, uh, just trying to help out. We're a pretty small foundation actually, but we're trying to be more of a bridge from, because there's a lot of, obviously there's a lot of nonprofits out there doing things, but we, we always, I think Lori and myself, we look at it like, we want to help the kids that the most underserved, right? And give them a chance because there's a lot of talent in in those areas. It's unbelievable. These kids you know, are it, brilliant. It really is about directing them to find the, the best avenues to direct their energies instead of negative and bad things that might happen. Because, because I, I agree completely doing with sports. I, I think that uh, especially like in the in like the worst areas, you need to get as many fields. I mean. All these yeah, broken never, apart, empty lots. Turn it into a <coughs> field. Put up more basketball courts. Make rinks for roller hockey, ice hockey. Get people to, to learn touch football, tackle football, soccer, anything, any athletic endeavor. Put them in clubs, put them in different things, <coughs> just so they get involved. 100%, not just, I mean, sports, great, but anything, right? Yeah. I mean, this. Engage them. And, and give them access. More than anything, I think it's choices. Yeah. You know, so hopefully they know well, they have choices. You know, you may, you may be an, an electrician, right? Yeah. And, and make a good living, a solid living, and be able to have you know, a a home and, and everything like that. As bad as it, it might seem like a terrible job, but plumbers, they make... That's what I mean. They make so I think great there's, money. There's all different avenues. It's not just sports. I love sports from the standpoint of team... You know, and you have to learn to you basically learn to fail. Yeah. Right. You're getting your butt kicked out there and then you have choices like, hey, do I want to do that? Do I want to keep working? You know, you have to make choices in that area. It's, it's engagement. It's getting people involved. It's, you know, I, I personally think that idle minds and idle time only cause trouble. Yeah. When I'm idle, I get bored, bored to death. <laughs> yeah. And I start going on walks <laughs> with, with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> now, uh, Frank, what a city, man. Look uh, at this place. We're in the middle of New York City. New York City, City and Central there's nothing Park. like New York City. <laughs> it really, really is, cool. especially Central Park. Central Park is, is, uh, is, is, is all inspired. Oh, you know, so many architecture these days. I don't know about, I don't know about that building. I don't, I don't <laughs> know if I want to be on top of that building, <laughs> right? They said, they say when it's a windy day, that building sways. Uh, I would not want to, and uh, I hear that place is, that, that place, it's like uh, like $60,000 a month or maybe even more than that to rent an apartment in that place. It's like ooh. incredible. It's like, and then you got some of these, like around here, you got some like million dollar uh, apartments and uh, penthouses that are like, uh, the rich and famous all live there. There you go. <sighs> Yeah, but this park, you're right. My little one come here, he wouldn't be climbing these rocks, trying to do everything. It's cool that it's here in the middle of the city. Uh, of course, according to uh, uh, Cosmo Kramer, it was in created by Joe Pepitone. <laughs> created by Joe Pepitone? <laughs> yeah, there's an episode of Seinfeld. I don't know oh if you're familiar with Seinfeld, where uh, Kramer's like uh, on the, 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 uh, the horse. And he's giving a tour of Central Park. He goes, hey, we're going into Central Park, which was created by Joe Pepitone between <laughs> True Store and the Civil War. <laughs> That's funny. It's like one of the funniest lines. I've seen a lot of the shows. I did not see that one. And not see that one. Well, my father is a big Yankee fan. And he grew up and his favorite player was Joe Pepitone. So every time I hear that, it just, it just makes me laugh. And yeah. he, was, he was a character. Joe Pepe, he was uh, he he was going around the minor leagues when I was coming through, and I think in like in Nashville, he was there in an instructional. He taught me some things about first, <laughs> just footwork wise. It was really good. I, I like, love Joe. Well, you won a bunch of gold gloves yourself. A couple. 
I mean, a couple. And first base, uh, they, they, they always get the thing, oh, the worst position, the worst players at first base. No, you actually need a good glove at first base. You see, steal those doubles, you steal those throws in the dirt, keep the outs from happening. Uh, you, I mean, I always want a good first baseman. Well, I think you want to be good defensively right all yeah. over. But it, it does get probably gets overlooked because it looks it looks pretty easy. You just kind of stand there and catch the ball coming across. And anybody can do that. Tim Wallach used to tell me that all the time. Anybody can play first. And I always feel I always felt like anybody could play third. Myself. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I I know with my limited baseball, they put me behind the plate. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, you know, you always put the fat kid behind home plate. So tell me, tell me you, how many pounds again you've lost? Uh, at my worst, I was over 500 pounds. Holy cow, Frank. And that was like uh, 2016. I had an illness. I had MRSA. I got through that. And I think that knocked, uh, knocked about 70 pounds off me. Okay. I got under 400. And then the pandemic hit. And the pandemic, I shot up to about 450 again. Okay. Uh, started walking a little bit back then. Got back down under 400. Got, got as low as about uh, maybe 360. And then I just made some bad habits and got back up to 383 last uh, August. Okay. And uh, starting in September, started walking. And uh, now this is 199 straight walks. And uh, my last weigh and I weighed 333. Good for you. So that's 50 what? pounds. And uh, I've gone from a size 69 waist to a size 58 waist. Good for you. 191 straight days? 190, yeah. Wow, good for you. That's awesome. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, 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 it's been really good and it's, it's fun that we're getting to walk with people like you. Uh, I mean, Don Mattingly. I mean, I'm a Mets fan, but of course, you were the Yankees to me. Well, I when appreciate I was a kid. that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, that. Dave, although, funny enough, even though I was a Mets fan, I kind of tried to copy the Dave Winfield swing that with the, when I was out in the backyard with the wiffle ball bat. I He's, just liked the way Dave Winfield swung the bat. <clears throat> That's a, talk about a unique dude, right? Got, what do you think he got drafted in all three sports? Yeah, he got drafted. Baseball, basketball, and football. He got drafted by three teams in four leagues. Tremendous no, no, person, Four leagues too. in three sports. Because he also got drafted in the ABA. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, you got you Learned got, something today. I will say this with Dave, and I, I've told, told this story a few times, but during the batting title race, you know, I was a rookie and Dave was, you know, a oh, veteran that, guy. That was. I mean, it was fun for me. It was like pretty pretty non uh, stressful at all. I was not really stressed over that at all. <laughs> you're in the big leagues for the first time and you're doing well. Yeah, 84. But Dave handled that. He treated me so good during that. I have so much respect for the way Dave handles himself. Not only himself, but the way he treated me. That literally went down to the last day of the season. Yeah. And basically like uh, what would you be like, like maybe a couple of points? Yeah, I don't even know what it was. But I, so I don't even remember that part of it. I remember more of the, you know, Dave and how he treated me, right? And how he made me, you know, he could have could have been a lot worse. <laughs> so that's that's kind of what I remember about it. You know, some people may remember it one way, but I, when you're in it, you remember different stuff about it. But Dave was cool. But, well, I, I always liked Dave Winfield. Uh, I'm I'm glad that. Uh, he made up with George at the end of the, at the endings. He was able to forgive George, and uh, Dave Win Dave Winfield's a class act. He is. was a class act. He was, even though I'm a Mets fan, I always appreciated Winfield. Yeah, you know what you said too, and I think the you know you use the word forgiveness, right? Like, yeah. What a great word, right? Because I think in in this world we we hold so many grudges and we get we we you know we get mad about something. And like forgiveness, man, is like, is just such a powerful word and powerful thing. If you can forgive people that have like felt like done you wrong or said bad stuff, but also like 
stuff that may be in your life. Yeah, right? You got to forgive yourself at times, right? So that, that's a cool thing. I love that word, forgiveness. Well, I, this was a great walk, you know. Thank you for doing this. I mean, it, it shows you how, what a classy guy you are and uh, how much you mean to New York. And uh, thanks a lot. This was, this was a pleasure. Well, I, I appreciate it. I really do. And I hope it's been fun. And, and like, you, uh, like for me, you like, you're inspiring. I'm, I'm sure you're inspiring. I'm not a big social guy, so I don't know what's going on out there. Uh, to be honest, in that world. But you got to be inspiring people, man, and keep going. Well, thanks. You have a goal you're going further? I mean, is there just kind of keep walking and keep... Just keep walking. I'm setting small goals. It's, 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 it's like uh, my goal, my next goal is 325 pounds. And then, then, then you set a next goal. All then right. you set that goal. You just... I like you it. You don't go... I think, I think you don't set... You don't try to climb Mount Everest. You try to climb... Uh, uh, Pike's Peak first. Get to the base camp first, right? Yeah. <laughs> you try to you try to get to Pike's Peak first. All right, it's been fun. Now you stay off my boy Vogie. All right, you stay well, off my boy Vogelbach. He's in Toronto now, so. <laughs> yeah, all right. And uh, maybe he'll forgive me one day. It just it just he just drove me nuts as a Mets fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of guys, right? Yeah, I, I, there are a lot of guys that like drive me nuts. You'd love Vogie. If you guys, you guys should go on a walk together. You and Vogie should go on a walk well, and talk. It uh, out. I'm game for I'm game for that. Yeah, he's awesome. He's an awesome dude. He might come out of the hotel right when we walk in. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Frank, thanks a lot. That's awesome, man. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks a lot. Frank Walks is powered by Body Armor.